Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're watching Batman on film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Hello, Bat Family, and welcome to this episode, number 184 of the Batman on Film podcast. Batman on Film is the sponsor and a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network. Check out all the shows over at batmanpodcastnetwork.com and follow us on Twitter at BatPodNetwork. I'm Garrett Grev. Thank you for listening. I, listeners, I'm so excited for you to be in the Bat Cave with us this week. Um, for those of you that have been listening to the show for a while or follow me on Twitter or follow you know, our editor-in-chief, Jet, Bill Jet Ramey on Twitter, you know we are football fans, a number of us at Batman on film. And we've got a very, very special guest, a gentleman I am just thrilled to be on the show, and that is Mr. Ryan Lauer. Ryan, welcome to the show. No, uh, Ryan, I love having you here, man. I always love when you join. Um, so welcome aboard, buddy. I'm I'm actually really pumped to have you on the show and, and sort of get to co-host this bad boy with me. So welcome aboard, bud. Thank you, Garrett. Yes, many people with the BOF community think of me when they think of football and the Gotham Rogues and the yeah. Gotham Rogues placement in the drafts this year and everything. So I can't wait to break all that down with you. Yeah, and you know, you're just an intimidating physical, you know, athletic <laughs> specimen, which is <laughs> sure. always, always I did great. some push-ups today. Good for you. Hey, you work on that fitness, buddy. Get that bad body yeah. like like Christian Bale. Just knock him out one after the other. No, after the other. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ryan, I mean, not that I'm not always psyched to have you, but I'm really excited for our special guest. Um, you may know this gentleman, dear listeners, as one third of the fantasy football juggernaut, the fantasy footballers. You may know him as the voice of Amazon Web Service commercials. And you may know him as the creator of the best podca podcast segment drop in the history of podcasting, um, which was the song of Fire and Ice riff that just blows my mind. I put it on my workout uh, music mix. I'm talking about the one, the only, the FF hitman, Mr. Mike Wright. Mike, welcome to the show. Oh, yeah. You can only, <laughs> you can only keep me quiet for so long before I'm I, know. I was like itching. I was like, you know what? I said I was going to introduce Ryan first and then get to you. Like, hey, Ryan's going to co-host this thing. And then once, the, once I hit record, I just got so amped. I'm like, oh, God, oh we're, get, we're good, Mike man. I, I'm happy to be here. I love jumping on and, and uh, getting a chance to talk about just – I like talk. I like doing podcasts. It's very, very fun. And I love jumping on doing some guest spots to talk about fantasy football and cut it up with people. But when I get a chance to like talk about other stuff that I'm interested in, it's like extra fulfilling. So the fact that we get to jump on here and, and, and talk some Batman, who I, I love Batman. So it, it absolutely works out. But I am fascinated. You guys have a Batman podcast network? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. You know what? If, this if you is, guys this is incredible, <laughs> there are a number of shows on there. You know, check it out. There's something for everybody. If you like um, Robin, there's a show a friend of ours hosts. No one likes called... Robin. <laughs> this is, we, a buddy of ours is going to like write me because of that because he loves Robin. He's got a show called Everyone Loves the Drake after one of uh, Tim Drake, one of the Robins, if you're, if you're not familiar. But yeah, man, it's um, plenty of shows. Mike, if you want to come on and talk about other nerdy stuff, like pick your pleasure, man. And actually, Ryan um you know my co-host for the day has his own batman podcast that he's nice enough to invite me on where we uh he, he walks through different storylines of the comics so it, we have a lot of uh a lot of bat fun a lot of bat you fun. guys talk through the ninja turtles batman well I, we absolutely did in fact ryan oh. was kind of, ryan was kind enough to have oh. me on he did a whole batman ninja turtles week and he had the the both writer and illustrator of one of the crossover series that oh. we got to interview 
that's super dope yeah i've got the book uh enjoyed that enjoyed the the movie version of it very much i'm telling you like i like batman i'm not i'm not knee deep in comic books that was it it just never happened for me as a kid i never got into it uh fortunately or unfortunately i'm not sure which (laughs) depending on the age that kind of can ebb and flow i'm not sure which side i fall in uh but but i do have a great affinity for superheroes and i and batman well you're you're in a great profession there is something about the as you say there's something about the combination there of the turtles and batman that drew you into you know i'll take a risk on this comic book though yes yeah no i, I picked it i but i i waited <laughs> for the uh the, the collection so i have the go. the hardback yeah well and i think we're all sort of roughly around the same age it kind of really hits in that late 80s early 90s nostalgia just like yes. oh man what's better than watching some bats and some turtles you know kick the butts of ninjas yep. it's outstanding <laughs> exactly yeah it's just fun yeah. Well, and you know what? Listeners and, and viewers of the Fantasy Footballers may know there's, there's an ongoing connection to Batman and a, and a running kind of gag that you guys do dedicated to the one and only, the returning Batman in the upcoming yeah. Flash movie, Mr. Michael Keaton. Um, and, you know, even if, uh, if you watch on the YouTube, you get like a Michael Keaton bust that's sitting over on the, the yeah, left he's, side he's of the He's staring studio. at me right now. He's with Very us Very lifelike eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Eerie. All right, guys. So we're going to spend a little bit of time with Mike. Um, we, we, how this kind of came to be, Mike was on Twitter, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and was like, Hey, I've got some time. Ask me anything. And I'm like, this is my shot. What's your favorite Batman movie? It's like the dark Knight. like easy answer. I said, follow up yeah. question. Would you please come on a podcast and talk about it? And he said, yes. And then dreams. <laughs> oh, you, true, caught me at, you caught me at the right time. You caught me the, the perfect uh, amount of time to do that the perfect amount of uh libation flowing that where perfect. i overcommit to things to two things i love but it but i no, but i'm very happy to be here it's gonna be fun all right well boys let's get into the interview all right mike so we know you obviously i listen to the show ryan listens to the show um for the listeners that might not listen um uh, i what are they doing what a bunch time? of losers what hobbies do they have? What are they into? And if it's not fantasy football, I, and it's nerds probably it's probably, yeah. probably Batman and comic books. But yeah, that's, nerds. That's the first time that fantasy football players have ever called anybody else a nerd, right? They're like, what do you like? Stuff that doesn't involve stats, loser. <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, just give us a little bit of background on on you know who you are and and what you guys do and what you guys are all about over there and you personally as well, if you would be so sure. Kind. So I'm um, I'm Mike from the Fantasy Footballers. Uh, we are a full-time, uh, year-long, I mean, believe it, like, if you don't play fantasy football and you're like, how do you talk about football, let alone fantasy football, year-long, we find a way to do it uh, because there's just, there is, there's always stuff to talk about. And we started this show, I don't know, six or seven years ago, and it somehow turned into our full-time job. And now we just, there's a bunch of us over here as, always having a good time, always talking about football. And uh, it, I, what else do you want to know about me? No, oh, that's good. I, you know, I know, I know because I listen to every episode. And I think I've been listening. If you've been doing the show for seven years, I've been probably doing it for six. You guys have a, a background in the video game industry. Yes. And I know that um, um, you are uh, also quite the musician. So give, me, give us a little bit of your interest. You know, what do you like to do when you're not doing fantasy football? Is it play games? Is it play music? Are you in a band? Anything like that? So I, I, I was in a band for a very, very long time. Uh, I mean, just growing up, as, as soon as you start, as soon as you pick up a guitar or a, I started on bass, uh, I, I was in a, in a band almost instantly. I did a youth band in my church. Then we started doing a real band. Did that up through my... Uh, like my mid twenties is when eventually when we pulled the plug and realized that hey everyone's kind of getting jobs, getting married, that this this particular thing is not going to work out. But I mean, I I spent my whole the majority of my life doing music things, being a musician, playing live musicals down in the pit. I traveled around a little bit with a with a fair band where we were hillbillies that covered classic rock songs, but we covered them in the ver- in like bluegrass hillbilly type style where that I played acoustic guitar. <laughs> Great. Uh, I mean, anything you could think of for music, 
of just about i've done it i i did the soundtrack for uh a very b horror movie um called uh i don't, I don't know if you guys do you cross over into horror at all lauer is our horror guru of the group right i say this and he's gonna say the name of like no i haven't heard of it fake uh, well <laughs> but you may not have heard the movie but you know who kane hodder is right oh yeah kane hodder he was Jason. yeah kane, kane hodder was the main guy in this movie it's called exit to hell okay. uh so i did this it's it's a b movie man if, if you're cool. gonna pull it up <laughs> be ready um <laughs> Uh, but so that was just my, my point. And then I met the guys cause I was doing music for video games. So I've kind of done, I've run the audio gamut, and then that turned into me being the audio engineer for this podcast. Uh, at least at the beginning, I've kind of handed those reins off now. Yeah, man. I, I, I said it before the, the game of Thrones theme song drop. I heard that thing on the way I was driving to, to, to work one morning. And I almost ran off the road. I'm like, this yeah. is the most fire thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Like, it's just like, God, this guy rocks so hard, man. So that's awesome. That's uh, so, so growing up music kid. Um, how'd you get into superheroes or what were some of your first uh, experiences with Batman or anything else kind of pop sure. culture stuff when you were a kid? I mean, I don't, I don't know, like the, the inception point of getting into superheroes in general. I've always, like, as far as I can remember, I loved superheroes, but I, I know for sure my dad was, Batman is my dad's favorite. He's a massive Batman fan, and he's a massive uh, Adam West fan. He oh, he nice. grew up on the Batman TV show, so like he was a diehard that he would he would have me watch it, and I really didn't like the show except for the fight scenes where then all the the Bam Biff pals like would right. start flying. Classic. That that's when it was good and could keep my attention. Uh, but one a, a strong memory is as a kid, my parents were uh, very judicious. Uh, in what movies we could see and what oh, television yeah. shows i could very watch. similar upgrading <laughs> uh but the batman movie came out the keaton one and it was this huge deal and it was a pg-13 movie and i'm i mean it was late 80s when it came out so i'm not of age but it was still my dad's like i'm we're going to see it so i i remember we drove out to this other mall we had to drive kind of far to go see it and so it was that was like a that was a big moment to go share with the dad of go see this like i'm more grown up i get to go see batman uh but that's just evolved i watched um you know the i consumed all the x-men cartoons when yes. i was young uh those were just incredible yeah well, any any type of superhero <laughs> video game i would always play those uh so but my my favorites but while i love batman he is not my favorite uh, Ooh, my okay. favorite that's my fair. favorite superheroes are are spider-man and wolverine so any anytime they're around that's my jam yeah those well, are to, top to, to bring it choices. in to bring it to the batman movie with keaton how was your dad's reaction to that movie having grown up on adam west yeah i mean yeah obviously the that's a much different uh yeah. portrayal of batman more uh as far as I know, more accurate to who Batman is, mm -hmm. at least compared to the super cheesy uh, TV show. But he loved it. He was he was all okay. about it. He he very much enjoyed that. And then the uh, Batman Returns, you know, until Schumacher kind of ruined Batman <laughs> and, and superhero movies for quite some time. Yeah, I put it in the <laughs> fridge for a while. It was uh, once you got on the it, heels of Batman and Robin. Chill. Yeah, yeah. Ice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, that really that really uh cooled out the franchise for a few years. It you know killed superhero movies, man. Oh, uh, it took uh, like all up to Blade and then X-Men for it to really kind of yeah. come back around. Yep. I was a big X-Men kid growing up. The animated series was one of my favorites. Speaking of awesome theme music, that theme music oh, was yeah. just like yes. ridiculous. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Ding. I mean the one two punch of, of Fox animation in the afternoon of that in Spider-Man cartoon. That was like yep. must-see TV. Absolutely. And then, and then bringing in the Batman the Animated Series too. And it was just like, wow, we had it, we had it made in the 90s. <laughs> it was a yeah, golden era. Yeah, childhood. life was good. Did you watch <laughs> the anima times. Batman the Animated Series, Mike? I did not. I did not. Ooh. It was, I never got into it. Okay. Ooh. I mean, I've, I've seen plenty of episodes of it, but it right. was never like, I, I never, I didn't set out to watch it. Mm -hmm. If it was on, I'm like, okay, I'll watch the Batman. That, that's one that's been kind of nice for me, you know, having kids now and I've got four boys, they're all maniacs, like Batman's kind of their primary hero for all of them. And then after that, they've got like secondary, like uh, my, my six-year-old is into Superman, my four-year-old loves Spider-Man. The yeah, baby, 
the baby was assigned Captain America. He doesn't quite know that he's supposed to be really Captain, Captain America. Oh yeah, Captain, good least, stuff, man. At least give him Iron Man or something, Captain America. Yeah, you know, for me, Iron Man just got too mainstream. That was played out. I said, let's go, let's go in a little Iron bit different Man direction. is too mainstream. So you went <laughs> Captain America. Yeah. What are you? Yeah. Yeah. Real subtle. You reevaluate your life. Real subtle in the grub house. Right? Like put things on Main Street. <laughs> But those the animated series episodes, when I was a kid, recorded them like on VHS tape. I think I still probably have yep. them up in a box in my mom's house. And those have been kind of nice to rewatch with the kids because, you know, a lot of the, the movies, um, not quite age appropriate. So the cartoons, all that, all those kind of cartoons from the 90s are, are nice ways to introduce the kids to those characters. Yep. Um, so you mentioned the background in video games, making soundtrack for video games. Have you played Batman video games? And if so, do you have a favorite? The I did play. I've played plenty of them. I mean, back from the uh, the OG NES where Batman had to be purple because yes. they, couldn't, they couldn't differentiate the colors of black <laughs> for Batman in the background. <laughs> uh, so I I played that a lot. One of the you know like accomplishments as a kid is I made it to Joker. Yeah, no, uh, I mean feet. I was I was swiftly dispersed of, but I at least made it to him. You made it. That's a goal I, uh, in itself. Yeah, so the, I did that, and then, um, uh, it, and then for the newer ones, the the Arkham ones, I've played, I think most of them. I may have missed one, uh, but Arkham Asylum, oh, yeah. uh, Arkham City, City, and then, the, then there was a third one that I, I don't believe it was made by Rocksteady, if I'm remembering the name of the company right, the developer. Uh, but then the newest one, uh, Arkham Knight, I think it was. Yeah, so I, I played through that too. Man, you fit right in around these yeah. parts. You rattled that off like a seasoned pro, you know, <laughs> like you're right. So Arkham Origins was made by WB Montreal. That's the one I, I yeah. did not play that one. Dude, don't sleep on that one. Go back if you get to, if you get some, you know, free time. I know it's it's really kicking into busy season for work for you guys and the number of pods per week start kicking up. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's one that's one that is really good story wise. You know, I think graphics are still really solid. Gameplay is cool. A lot more to, like detective elements to that game. So if you haven't played it, go out and play it, listeners. That goes for you guys too. Yeah, they're they're fantastic games. Mike, non-Batman questions for you because you're here and I, and I want to take advantage of that. All right, music let's go. Guy. Um, favorite Blink-182 album? Ooh. Uh, it's, it's a toss-up only because the a Dude Ranch was my introduction to, to Blink. But if you're saying like which – when you're weighing it against Enema – dude ranch is is just far more raw the the end the mix of the album is not nearly as good enema is is a perfect album it is like it's it's very hard to do a flawless album and that thing is flawless everything is fantastic the songwriting is great the hooks are incredible the, the seamless transitions between songs the production the engineering the guitar tones everything about it is is perfect so i would go enema great right choice on. Yeah, I think Lowry would probably agree with that one, <laughs> I'm, too. Oh, I'm there. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. there, too. But Dude Ranch I mean, was also my first, so it's kind of a special spot in your still heart. It's still great. It's still great, but if you have to say which one is the best, it's Enema. It's Enema. I mean, Enema is track one play, and you don't touch it until it's done. And also, it's only like exactly. 36 minutes, too, so I mean, it's a short listen, but you just replay, too. Why not? Yeah, the listeners to this show know I've talked about growing up. I lived out in the middle of nowhere, like out in the woods. It was about from when I left my house to when I got to high school. Like that drive time was about Enema of the State, which was oh, awesome. very nice. <laughs> Enema of the State. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, how about um, better, better uh, third wave ska band, less than Jake or Real Big Fish? Oh, man. Of the two, I got into less than Jake more. Yeah, so. man. That's Mike. Uh, that's where I go, dude. Uh, I, uh, ninth and I'm Pine. Right oh man, I'll, Ninth and Pine. I'll throw that song on like any at any time on any single day. All my best friends are metalheads. That one just rocks. That that track rips from beginning to end. And yeah, then uh, both okay. are solid, but less than Jake is. I like. Okay, last last non Batman. Then we're gonna talk Dark Knight. Okay. Um, favorite song by the Beach Boys. Oh my goodness. A Beach Boys question? Oh, yeah. Beach Boys question. Coming at so, you hot. I, I mean, that's – I don't 
what made you ask about the Beach Boys? <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Beach Boys like for the last. It's I don't great because like, I months. love no, I love the Beach Boys. I don't yeah. think I've ever talked about that on any like a podcast or anything. Oh, either. really? But yeah, I just I just happen to love them. I was gonna ask you, uh, Beatles, Stones, Britney or Beach Spears? Boys? Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh, Britney Spears has some bangers too, man. Don't sleep on <laughs> Britney Spears catalog. But no, I I love I really really love the uh, the Beach Boys, and it is. It's tough for me to. Uh, I I would probably say in my room is my favorite uh, one. It just it I don't know you know there's there's just something so soothing and and melodic about it. So it's it's tough between that one and Good Vibrations. Ah, it's there just it is. Like, it's mine. Like the the I mean the cello. Like yeah, what the is cello going? Is... Those dudes were they were on it, man. <laughs> they were doing some really no, wacky stuff. And you have no the joke. cello driving the song. Yes. <laughs> So yeah. it, I love the Beach Boys, man, but it, it it's tough to pick because those two are so very very different. Uh, yeah, totally. But the 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 juxtaposition of the verse with just that the the uh, the organ going for good vibrations, then then it kicks it into gear, like I said, with the cello. So one of the, one of those two, I don't know, I can't pick. It's hard to go wrong with those two. It really almost anything off of Pet sounds fantastic. Yeah. All right, Mike, thank you. That was a lot of fun for me and <laughs> excellent taste, I, I must add. So with that, guys, let's talk about The Dark Knight. Okay, so um, this one was a bit of a hit. It, oh, it, yeah, uh, a little, bit. little bit of a hit, a little bit of a fan favorite, uh, made over a billion dollars in the box office, uh, won an Academy Award, I mean, was kind of entered in into the pantheon of movies that were sequels and kind of outshone the, the initial movie in their franchise. I remember distinctly the first time that I saw this movie, but Mike, do you remember the first time you laid eyes upon what I consider to be just a masterpiece, not just the comic book movies, but cinema in general? Man, the, I, I can remember, I don't remember how old I was, but I, I definitely remember sitting down in the, the theater being very excited for it. I mean, you had all the, the, the pre hullabaloo about Keith uh, and the internet being oh, so internet. Mad. as the internet does, the you internet, know, the internet, they get really mad about everything, uh, especially when it comes to their, their comic book people and just going into the, into the movie of like, okay, what are you going to expect from Ledger's Joker? Like this is all people are talking about. And then the the movie opening with the strings and the uh, the bank heists, and you're like, "Holy freaking crap! This <laughs> movie's going to be awesome!" Right? Did you see? So that they actually had released that. I think Laura, correct me if I'm wrong. You'll know. Eight minute is that? Is it the the prelude kind of eight? Oh yeah, as that like was a, as a trailer or something. Yeah, it, it was released in IMAX with uh, I Am Legend. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for IMAX people, and then they did the for regular theaters. They did the first trailer drop with I Am Legend, and uh, I distinctly remember it because I was on a date, and I told my date uh, next door, I Am Legend's playing. I'm leaving this movie to go in there to watch the Dark Knight trailer. I'll be back, and she knew you this. Did you bring your date? <laughs> no she was gonna stay. you left wait she, Laura, no, I left left her. Her. i did oh, yeah dude no she understood she understood this wasn't a discussion it was like no this is happening don't make me choose between you and batman you won't like the end result and that's not the person i'm with today anyway so i was gonna say that's it, not it, your it, it, it's all fine yeah. yeah and so i went and it was like of course it was the last trailer it was like 15 minutes that i stood in the back of that that theater and i finally saw it and then I went back and joined her, and she was like, "Was it good?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, it's like so, so much good. better than I, you." I don't even care I what mean, happened in this movie now. I, <laughs> I'll great. probably never love you, but I loved that trailer. <laughs> yeah, you and the Dark Knight trailer. Uh, yeah, somebody's got to win. It's not looking good for you. So, Mike, no. you 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 were aware of sort of like it felt like it was almost a cultural phenomenon before it was even released, just because the the you know, there's a lot of internet buzz and everything else. Do you, did you ever see any of the viral marketing campaign that went on? It would have been like the summer of 2007. Um, and that included the first look at Ledger's Joker, which got a lot of people, you know, talking. I have, uh, I have a vague recollection of like, it, were they movie posters? Yeah, that there was, 
there was like little pictures that you could um, like reveal bits of it, and it re- and it ended up revealing one of the posters that was like the first look oh, at okay. Ledger's no, Joker. No, I, 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 I didn't. I wasn't aware of that, but just I'm remembering the picture of like we had the, I think the was the with the laughing, like the, like it had a cool like font and the right the ha 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 above. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's totally. that's how that's the only thing I remember. I don't remember cool stuff of the cool marketing though. Yeah, it was, you know, it's it's interesting when you see some of um you know what movies do now with viral marketing sort of, you know, this thing was a good 13 14 years ahead of its time and sort of right. used the internet in some interesting ways. Ahead of its time in a number of ways. You mentioned that the bank heist um, and knowing that you're a music guy, you know, the score there with the strings and such like yes. this building tension. Um, you know, what were your thoughts on the music that went in this bad boy? Oh, I mean, the soundtrack is, the, and and the stinger especially, what is it? Which I mean, just right. goes on throughout the entire movie. It's incredible. But I mean, Nolan and, and uh, uh, Zimmer, if I'm not mistaken, are yep. they always end yep. up working together and doing great things and i saw some behind the scenes uh where they were talking i'm pretty sure it was for the heist and they're like they're using razor blades yeah on on the strings to get the that particular sound and he, and he's always doing crazy stuff with like shepherd tones and and like so yeah the, it is it's a very memorable uh addition to to the heist and you know in all like all the big scenes but it, the the soundtrack works very very well with the the scope of uh, of all the shots and all the directing to to take it to the I, you using your words which I agree with into a it is a masterpiece of cinema. Since you're a musician, do you do you really uh, zone in on that upon like a first viewing of a movie? Do you take notice of the music like right yeah. away? Yeah, I do. I uh, yeah, I and oh, man, what was it? There was. Now, now I'm trying to pull just like from the memory well because you spark. Of, I think it was Contagion. I don't know. There was one uh, uh, when you're know, like a plague type of movie, which you know, <laughs> the irony of <laughs> yeah, us being through the right. pandemic. Um, and I think that one came from a bat, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but like that one had like this weird eight bit the whole thing going on, and I'm like trying to, to trying to get my wife hyped. I'm like, do you do you hear what's going on in this movie? <laughs> It's like so, Castlevania. So yes, I, I, I definitely pay attention to to soundtracks uh, the the first time I'm watching a movie. Well, it's, it's the soundtrack in The Dark Knight is like almost a character of its own. You think like, yep. you know, Hans Zimmer and the way he can sort of build this big, broad, deep sound. You know, you get sort of, you know, the, the bombacity of what he does. But then like, to your point, that really tension driving strings and the shepherd tones, which just like that, that opening scene, the, the bank heist. I remember when I saw it being like, oh my gosh, I got to like yep. stretch my <laughs> back out. Like I'm all tensed up, man. Yeah. And every time I watch that, I play a game and I always take a screenshot and I, and I pass it to buddy. It's called, and I call it, which window is it? And that opening shot to see if they can guess which window in that building that does that the, oh. the goons blow out to, to uh, zip line across. And I figured out how to, how to zone in and they they haven't yet and i'm like guys i do this to you every time like <laughs> said, come Ryan, on there, we're just not on key, your level buddy there's a key window that does not look like all the rest and you just count from there but yeah this, this is some <laughs> super nerd i mean i am loving I, dude, it. I, yeah diving in deep mike diving in bad. real Love deep it. so we, <laughs> well, we mentioned film, i mean you guys have only so many films you can talk about <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah and then numerous films that might be made or could be made or were almost made um you know in people that were almost cast but somebody who was cast that you we talked about already was heath ledger um you know what did you think going into the movie did you have expectations of how he would portray the joker preconceived notions and then you know what did you think once you actually saw it on screen the i mean i i I definitely followed all the internet hullabaloo of how upset people were and trying to remember the timeline i think knight's tale it, like all what i knew of heath was right. knight's tale and before that uh 10 things i hate about you. Oh, yeah. things. so that's a classic we, do, movie's great i mean yeah. those those teenage movies like that and uh uh the one with love hewitt what was that one 
the can't party. hardly wait. Can't yeah, hardly can't wait. Hardly wait. Uh, yeah. Speaking your language. I mean, th- those movies are fantastic, and I've loved mm-hmm. them. Uh, but that's what I knew of Heath Ledger, and you're going to turn him into the Joker. And what we know about the Joker is Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. like, that's okay. <laughs> Good luck, young man. <laughs> yeah. Good luck re- coming up to the filling those shoes. Uh, and he just absolutely. I mean, it's it's just he smashes it. I mean, it's it's so nuanced. The my favorite part of uh, of his whole thing uh, of the the entire performance is when he's he goes in and he uh, uh, sits down with at the mob meeting. He, you know, he just bursts in. Aside from making the pencil disappear, which is just right, just one of the, the still, best scenes. Just, oh my yeah, gosh. still one of the best scenes. But uh, when someone calls him crazy. And he says, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. And like his, it's just this really tiny thing. But in that moment, you really get a sense of the character of he's, he, he is not a delusional, insane person. He really just wants to burn the world to the ground just because. And you're like, he emphasizes like, no, I'm, I'm not. How dare you? You can like you can say things about me, but don't you dare call me crazy. Like that's the biggest insult that he can get. So it I mean, he absolutely knocks it out of the park. It was a I mean people we still talk about it and it went from it went from Heath has to replace replace Nicholson to Jared Leto has to replace Heath Ledger and that didn't go so well for Can't do it. Can't do it didn't go well for Mr. Yeah. Leto. 30 seconds Which, to Mars, good band, uh, not the best Joker. <laughs> and and to, to be fair to Leto, it may not all be his fault. Uh, right. what's, yeah. what's happening with these DC movies, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're ruining them themselves. But They've, they've had some troubles. It, yes. I, I, I love, I, to put it lightly at times, I, I love that you call out that scene because it is, I, I recently rewatched it, um, I had a 4K disc that like I bought and I never busted out. I'm like, God, let's watch this bad boy and um, really dug into it. And that scene sticks out And Ledger does this really interesting thing with hard consonant sounds and like the way he moves yes. his mouth in that scene. Cause he says, I'm not. And he puts this like yes, super yes. hard T That's at what I'm end. saying. And you're, it's like no. unsettling and like very specific, very, very specific, very nuanced choice. You're talking about like how to him, that character being called crazy was such this insult and they they did this thing in the comics for a while where they tried to explain how the joker was so effective and so maniacal and they said he actually had like super sanity he was so sane that it like interesting yeah that it like warped like he saw the world in the most sane way a person can and, and that almost drove him crazy that explanation didn't really last but <laughs> it kind of that kind of um reminded me of what you just said there why hasn't that been in a movie right yeah, super yeah that's insane, insane man yeah <laughs> super it seems insane. like such an easy uh concept to convey to a general yeah, audience sure. it's weird general audience. it's weird all aboard it, you'd think they just start there and the rest of the thing writes itself well L- ledger wasn't the only big casting news with the dark knight um katie holmes had uh depicted um, rachel dawes a new character for these chris nolan movies in batman begins and then was recast uh, into Maggie Gyllenhaal, which was sort of, um, I don't know, like that wasn't, I feel like the, the news of the Ledger thing sort of dwarfed that recasting. Yeah, I don't but, even know why it happened. Well, and Ryan, please you, enlighten me. I'm in, I'm, I imagine I'm with the right people. Yeah, you, well, you are. Um, Ryan, you want to take a crack at this one? Air quote scheduling conflicts. Ah. Yeah. This was also scheduling conflicts? You can't be in the second Batman movie? Right. This, well, this also came on the, the heels of Tom Cruise likes to oh, jump on couches yeah, in a relationship yeah. with Katie Holmes. That sucks for Katie. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, um, you know, the lovely daughter out of the deal. Everything else seemed to not work out too well for Katie on that one. Yeah, so even more specifically, she had scheduling problems and the movie she was making sure to prioritize over the giant sequel to Batman Begins. Was it The Gift? No, it was oh. Mo Money with Queen Latifah. That old Oh, yeah. Movie. Oh, that classic. My gosh. You know. that, old, that old chestnut. Yeah, you know, <laughs> oh, everybody's favorite. 
critics top tens list. Like I think it's um fifty <laughs> movies to see before you die. It's like, you know, yeah, Mo Money. not on it. Number three, Mo Money. <laughs> oh, I almost said number three. You're in my brain, buddy. Um, yeah. And I, I thought, you know, did you think, what did you think of Maggie Gyllenhaal's performance in The Dark Knight, Mike? Uh, it, it was, you know, I, I, I didn't have a problem with it. I, I do, I remember it being quite jarring in the theater going, wait, who's that? That's not Joey. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I was, yeah, yeah, Joey Potter. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I even knew that the replacement had happened and then yeah. all of a sudden there's just this other character and it was oh okay uh but no i i mean i thought she served the, the character uh served her well you know uh the the the, the, the moment that comes to mind well number one i i her her did her demise scene is a little a little hacky for me though I say yes. Like it, that, that was a little. Uh, mm. That was that yeah. part's a little over the top. And thing, then but, boom. Yeah, but the but the conversation of of her walking with uh, uh, Two Face before he's Two Face, of course, uh, with Harvey, and talking about you know like well you're the the DA, you're if you're not getting shot at you're not doing your job. I, so so I, I didn't have a problem with her until the I guess the end. Yeah, it's funny. We've got a, a buddy of ours. Um, you know, you did a soundtrack for, for a B movie. He starred in a series of B movies focusing on a family and their runaway dog. Uh, his name's Rick Shu. Um, he thinks that death scene is like, mm, like a peak oh, cinema. Oh, he loves it? He thinks the acting is really good on it. And I, when I rewatched it, I'm like, ooh, this is just not, not yeah, up my alley. It didn't hit for me. And Nolan kind of has a reputation of not always getting the most out of his female actresses, female actress, actresses. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if there's anything up with that, but Laura, what were your thoughts? Were you a, were you a Maggie Gyllenhaal fan with this one? Uh, not a whole lot. I thought it was, I thought it, it kind of seemed a little uh, working too hard to try and be like, yeah. this is my stamp on, mm. on Rachel Dawes. Like I'm here now. This is my character. And it, it's just, eh. I was going into the movie hoping that she died because then that would clear a, oh. a I, I, it, it would clear Brutal the path Howard. for a love interest for Catwoman uh, next. That's well, why I was like, we need the love interest part, so get out of here. Um, like I didn't mind Katie Holmes. Future. I feel like she was she was a consistent um, hitter that always hit doubles in a room full of home run hitters. So it's like, of course, she's not yeah her against everybody else she like she's not the best you know that does that make sense right yeah but she still did a solid performance she, she, yeah exactly. she's got a spot on the roster double's still good yeah <laughs> yep. should i go Man, football terms the first down tough is crowd a, over here <laughs> yeah sorry maggie i know you're listening um we i thought you were great in that secretary movie um the uh other you know big sort of performance that gets talked about here everybody's you know favorite British thespian, yeah. Michael Caine. Uh, yeah. Mike, is Michael Caine the best Alfred on screen? Is he the best one we've ever had? Let me see here. So uh, I guess I've never really thought about Alfred that much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? You're in this crew now, Mike. Yeah, you gotta you're going to think of everything a lot. So Alfred, oh, like OG movie Alfred, I think he's, he's just kind of there. Yeah, Michael Goff. Yeah, he's 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 just go. Alfred. He's he's just there. I don't know. I maybe I maybe I need to go back and watch him again, but I don't I don't have really much memory of him. Uh the new Alfred, uh which is uh Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons. There you go. I should have let you get there. And he he's fine, but he's not Michael Caine. So I guess that leads me to believe that Michael Caine is in <laughs> fact, yes, he is the best he's the best Alfred. Worked it out. We worked through that. We, we I think got that's the right it. answer. I think that's the right answer. And, um, you know, like one of my favorite gifts to Unless use Lego is Lego Batman Alfred is on the table. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a good Alfred. That is a good that's Alfred. A, that's a great Alfred, yeah. <laughs> if we're going live action, though, I think Michael Caine okay. gets yeah. it. Because the dude can emote so much. One of my favorite, like, I don't know, I think my favorite Christmas movie is The Muppet Christmas Carol. And that okay. dude can make you emotional interacting with a bunch of puppets. Like, uh, you know, that guy can act his pants off and he does just such a good thing. One of my, one of my favorite scenes in this movie, and Mike, I'd love to know what yours is overall, but one of my favorite quiet scenes in the movie is after 
uh, Rachel Dawes has died. Bruce is very defeated. Um, yes. He's sitting kind of slumped in his chair. And Alfred's about to bring over the I'm going to break up with you note on the little tray. And, um, you know, Bruce looks at him and says she was going to, she was going to leave him. Like we're going to be together. And he's like, I'm just going to take this note right back. And don't you worry about that. (laughs) Like Kane does such a nice job with that, man. Well, I think we was spectacular. We focused on Ledger's uh, enunciating. No, I'm not. We got to talk about Kane's enunciating of tangerine. Yeah. Like the way he hits those syllables of tangerine, like, (laughs) nails it nobody on film in history of cinema has pronounced this so wonderfully yeah ruby's ruby's the size of tangerine that's right <laughs> yeah he's he's starting ahead of all of us though just having the accent right yeah it makes a big difference i think that like british actors man if you need to be kindly um intelligent uh you're, you're already there and if you need to be menacing villains like just like it's a, it's a great shortcut and i wonder if those who are actually British feel the same way, or if that's just us stupid Americans, where we're like, well, you are, you are clearly very intelligent and much smarter than me. I can hear you talking. <laughs> that dude sounds different than I do. Yeah. He must be super smart or <laughs> very evil. <laughs> or both. Or yeah. Both. Yes. Yeah. In any well, action well, movie. There's something about, I think all British can do American accents perfectly and Americans cannot do British accents. Correct, <laughs> dude. Which, Lauer, that, what a delightful transition because let's talk about the main man, Christian, uh, Christian Bale. He's Welsh and um, you wouldn't know it by watching this trilogy. Uh, he really um, was able to put his own stamp on the Bruce Wayne character. But, you know, Mike, out of all um, the Batman we have, who, who is your favorite live action uh, Batman? Is it Christian Bale? It is, without a doubt, it's very easy. It's Christian Bale. Uh, he, is, and I, I am an unabashed Christian Bale fanboy. Uh, oh, I have liked him from the beginning back all the way to Newsies, where uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Newsies. Oh, dude, but it, it, uh, I, I could probably sing it for you right now, but oh, we don't man. have time for that. Yeah, I, I'll jump on to the third, and we will harmonize <laughs> together. It'd be beautiful. Whatever. That's my cigar. <laughs> uh, Fantastic. Nobody I, can I see that both of you even dressed up as Christian Bale and Newsies <laughs> for this recording. So yeah. What a, what a delight. If you're not familiar with it, it was uh, Disney made a musical about the, the, the Newsies strike <laughs> back when it, uh, in what would have been, I don't know, like early 1900s in, in right. New York City or so. And Christian Bale was the lead in a, as, rumor has it as the tale goes he had never sang nor dance uh professionally and he came in and and like he learned how to do it for this movie and not like and he's not incredible at it but certainly perfectly fine yeah (laughs) certainly i think everybody had been counting you know the days down to the fact when disney would do a live action musical based on a newsboy strike and he you know the expectations were high and he crushed them I it and if you haven't watched it, uh, you know, bat listeners, um, it's you know oddly full of children like chomping cigars, you know, with old timey New York early nineteen hundreds man. It is. What are you gonna it's, do? It's a delight, and then you go to that, and it's like, um, I suppose that with Patrick Bateman, American Psycho, Christian Bale. Yeah, it's, it's like dude. this guy has got range. Yeah. Bateman, the machinist. Like I, I was already a, a very massive Christian Bale fan, so I, I was pleased to see that he that he did very well with batman offbeat uh equilibrium do you like oh, the movie or fan. no big big fan of equilibrium Huge Thank fan. You. that one it's, catches a lot of slack and i don't understand why i'm like that is a great timing movie. It, it was the timing of it where post matrix uh, like the matrix had just come out and yeah. made i mean it, it's hard to really put into words for like if you're not of our age where Mm -hmm. like back when the matrix came out you weren't inundated with this is what this movie is about you could go see movies like the sixth sense and not have been spoiled uh and we went and we saw the matrix and we we knew it was keanu reeves i knew there was computers or something involved with it but like (laughs) we knew nothing about this movie and you went in and the concepts of this movie that 
you're like it's not real you're living in a simulation and this is kind of the first time we were hearing it you know, as young teenagers and it was and the, that with the, all the fighting and the special effects so i mean everything coming together this you're like this is one of the best movies i've ever seen like this this right. is and it's going to hold the test of time which it does the first matrix still holds up it's fantastic even though they should make some sequels at some point it, uh, I, I believe the fourth is coming out, right? Or <laughs> second, this... Yeah, the second is going to be out. They're going to release it. It's going to be on HBO Max because uh, two in- returns and revolutions Our... don't exist in my mind. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. That I won't argue for Returns. them. Um, but The Matrix 1 is like was an, was a earth-changing movie for right. people of our age. And Equilibrium came out, and it's not as good as the matrix as much as i love equilibrium it's not as good so it's just immediately but it's it's put head to head with it i mean it's like uh, uh like volcano and dante's peak you know Dude, where they perfect they just they came out at the exact same time you're gonna pick a side and now the the i guess the analogy breaks down because like neither of those movies is a cinematic event that it cannot be missed like the matrix. I, I like to go i like to go with armageddon or Deep there impact yeah there you go yes yeah, yeah. yeah same exact uh scenario there uh so equilibrium just wasn't as good but it's still really it's good. still good. excellent <laughs> and and as far i mean as far as i know that type of action i had never i had not seen that type of action where it's the close hand-to-hand combat really involving guns not just i'm hiding behind a car i jump out pap 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 and right it's no it's it's up close and now you see you know movies like john wick where that's what the whole movie is and so that was kind of my introduction to it i could be wrong that i'm crediting equilibrium for that but i do so no i think that's where it it definitely where it hit an audience and you know it went from gun kata as they called it gun kata yeah good wow that's that sounds right. That's I think that checks out. <laughs> like Equilibrium, and then we mentioned American Psycho. Those are really some movies that um, got a lot of fans petitioning for um, Christian Bale to get the role of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Gotcha. And it was great casting, worked out great. Actually, um, the Machinist he had just lost all that weight, you know, was right. super emaciated and bulked up too much. And Christopher Nolan asked him to lose some weight because he actually got too big. Like he swung, the pendulum went back too far in the other direction. And he did, and he just like, and then you saw in The Dark Knight, obviously he's a bit more lean. But since we mentioned, we're talking about um, Christian Bale uh, in, in when he was first appearing as Batman. Um, what did you think of Batman Begins? Was that one that you saw in the theater? Were you a big fan of that? I, I did see it in the theater. It was, at the time I remember it, it was simultaneously amazing and yet had a couple hackney parts of it were that were just like what why why was that a part of the movie but back then you know i mean superhero movies were still trying to come back uh where we we mentioned it earlier but like the the er, the the schumacher batman movies killed superhero movies and then blade and especially for me at least especially x-men the the first one it changed what hollywood thought of of superheroes again like oh the nerds are back and they're ready to give us their money (laughs) if we just if we make movies that are actually good right Uh, so it was it was just a, a you know a very different take i had never uh dove into that backstory of bruce wayne becoming batman where he goes off to uh uh, china or or i can't remember off the top of my head where he goes meets al ghul and that that wasn't a storyline i was aware of so it was interesting to get that added to the camp to my canon of knowing what batman is um but then you know it's like there's a couple weird parts like when he turns on the sonar and and the bats show up you're like oh that's 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 some schumacher stuff right there that was not really needed that's that's actually it's straight out of a, a comic book like almost directly lifted and it's one of those things where sometimes what works on the page doesn't always work in live action right and it's you know I, it's so interesting because you know to your point mike um hollywood is coming around and on, on this idea that we can do these things and they don't have to be tongue-in-cheek or kind of slapsticky yeah yeah they can be more serious yeah it was like oh my gosh they're so you know 
earnest, like, oh my gosh, you're taking this super seriously. I was, I was blown away by that. And then obviously the Dark Knight kind of ramps everything up from a stake standpoint, you know, to the next Certainly. level. What was your favorite scene? We can start. I know you're a very busy guy. I just like, thank you so much for coming on the show again. We're this good, has been man. a really We're fun good. conversation. What, what's your overall favorite scene from the Dark Knight? Uh, I mean, it, it probably is the heist um, because it's what, I mean, just what it does for the movie of, I mean, setting the table that you are really about to experience something. The scope is gigantic. Uh, the, the, the funny parts of uh, like the last time I was watching it and just vocalizing it, we, we've all thought it, but vocalizing it to my wife of, you know, how they, the, the henchmen start taking each other out. And you're like, you didn't think before you accepted this job that someone said, hey, when this guy's done with his job, kill him and we're all going to get more money. You never <laughs> took one second to think, oh, they're yeah, prob they're probably telling the other guys this right. and there's going to be someone coming after me. Uh, so I mean, like, so there's there's some humor in it. The the big reveal of the Joker, him, the uh, no, I'm supposed to kill the bus driver. And then just looking around, taking these really calculated steps, um, and then, and then, and then you get the the shot of the actor who's in ev one of the actors that's in ev like every movie. I but you have no idea what his name is. Uh, comes out with a shotgun, and it's the worst, the worst shotgun shooting you've ever seen. Where <laughs> right. he's like he's moving the shotgun forward while shooting it. Like it's like off to the side of his body on top he's of He's almost, he's trying, he's, he wants his bullets to go even faster. <laughs> this is how they do it in the movies. <laughs> go, go bullets, go. And you're just like, there is absolutely no recoil going on from this shotgun as he just, just throwing it all around to the- Very strong mob banker. Very, yeah, very strong to the, mob banker. To the smoke bomb, smoke grenade in the, in the guy's mouth that he then doesn't pull out of his mouth. He just sits there waiting for it to explode. Yeah. But the, and so I, there's just so so much greatness in that whatever it is five to eight minute scene that it's my favorite yeah i love it i think uh, from an introductory you get a lot of yeah. that <laughs> it's great Hans zimmer is always good for that yeah I, I was i would i would say for me i it's one when i'm posed to that question as often i am in these circles you know, uh, I'm always between the bank heist and the interrogation scene, like just seeing like oh, tour yeah. de force performance between Bale <laughs> and Ledger just in a room, just like simple lighting. And it's so unnerving. The dialogue's great. Uh, I just I, what those two guys could do together was impressive. And, you know, tragically, um, never get to see any more of that. Uh, you know, rest in peace. Heath Leather, Ledger, amazing that he was able um, or that the Academy recognize him posthumously with a um with a um you know oscar and at the academy awards that year uh, just so well deserved like those guys there's a line uh they have joker say where he's like i think we were going to do this you know wow or is it like i think we're going to do this for the rest of time destined to do this forever yeah and you're like God, it's still forever <laughs> yeah man you'll be in a padded cell for exactly and you're just like dang it ah oh, they 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 didn't but did yeah. you guys as as i make like the the worst jump from uh honoring the the passing of heath are you guys familiar with the bad man the clips yes. of college humor yes with people uh, yeah being... the youtube videos yeah yes man. and just him overdoing everything of uh of the batman voice and there's the video of him like they put the wrong clown in the interrogation room so it's that scene but he's just beating up like a a kid's birthday clown <laughs> no i have not seen that one. Oh, and he's just like uh, swear to me <laughs> how have i not seen this <clears throat> oh i i think my favorite one of those is when he's going he's trying out all the different voices and then he yes. does like the john the malkovich where were the other yeah. drugs going that is like, <laughs> no, malkovich that's not really that's not yeah that and the um the one where he's He's uh, it's he's a uh, he's catching with up with a uh, penguin, and Commissioner Gordon and Penguin is uh, uh, Os Patton Oswald, and that's a great one. And then they like they call him out for actually killing people because you're like that's like the weirdest thing. He's sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Of <laughs> uh, we're want we're watching Batman just give people 
okay, maybe you're not killing anyone. You're giving people like, oh yeah, con- you know, concussions that they're not coming back from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but your rule is, you don't kill people. Meanwhile, you let the Joker go time and time again. How many people has the Joker killed? It's like what? Just just what is delivering happening? concussions. Dudes are on I your was, IR for months with uh, the beatings. Your rule? <laughs> <laughs> I the one the one I like of those is where he's like being super pervy and overly sexual about everything yeah. with oh, Talia. Man. Not safe, not safe oh my for gosh. work, but hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, this was the, your plan. I won't, I won't say the line that precedes this, but it follows with, in an order that may surprise yes. you. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. Oh, explicit. man. Explicit. It, but, uh, if we have minors that may be listening to the podcast, I know we typically keep things pretty PG <laughs> around these parts. Do not go looking for that one. Look for the other ones. They're, ask they're your funny. Parents. Ask your, don't ask your parents. They're going to ask who told you, and they're going to say, oh, it was Garrett, uh, did. That Garrett nice Ryan from, from Batman on film and Mike Wright, you know, from the Amazon commercials. And they're going to be yeah. like, what? <laughs> there goes that sponsorship deal. Bezos is going to hear about this. Won't be good for anybody. Um, Mike, we're at time, man. Thank you so much as, you know, a longtime listener of the, of your show. Uh, I've just enjoyed listening to you speak uh, through my headphones and car speakers for years and years and years. It's great to actually have a conversation with you. And it's awesome to hear that you have outstanding taste when it comes to music, video games, movies, cartoons, superheroes, superheroes. (laughs) Like that's just rad, man. And, um, you know, don't tell Andy or Jason, but I typically, listen to your fantasy advice the most well i got the, the best three. takes you do have the <laughs> best <laughs> takes you never told me carry on johnson was going to be awesome so that's uh, right <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry jason if you listen uh too bad can i do one quick question let's bring yeah, this louder, batman and yeah. football worlds together okay uh, do. the gotham rogues the the Pittsburgh Steelers stand in for the Dark Knight Rises. If you had to kick out one team in the NFL to bring in the Gotham Rogues, which mm. NFL team would it be? I like it. If I had to kick one team out, oh man. I mean it would have been it would have been Jacksonville, but I think they're gonna try and turn things around. Uh oh uh, we'll go with the Raiders. The, the Raiders the, <laughs> the Raiders are always go. a joke. Yeah, they are they're they don't know what they're doing over there. So if we have a chance to put a team that maybe can put it together. Now, they, of course, had uh, Heinz Ward on the team. And I'm not a big fan of Heinz Ward because I I have to hate the Pittsburgh Steelers forever for stealing right. the Super Bowl away from my Arizona Cardinals. So I won't, I won't like the Gotham Rogues either. Well, I haven't lived – um, long, I'm not old enough to have been alive for a Minnesota Vikings in the Super Bowl appearance. So, Lauer, you didn't ask me, but I would say get the Green Bay Packers out of the NFL. Packers go Gotham <laughs> Rogues. You, you know, that's 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 my pick. You were like one kick away, though, at one point. Yes, uh, in 98, um, Gary Anderson hadn't missed one all year. I was snowboarding that day and uh, went back in and watched, you know, a, a decent chunk of the game. And... Um, missed that field goal and i just like dejectedly Brutal. grabbed my snowboard and just like walked up the hill <laughs> like just like into the cold bleak darkness brutal very brutal well mike uh thank you again anything um you know where can the listeners find you online or listen to more of your uh, wonderful voice and music stylings sure you can find me on twitter and instagram i am at ff hitman and then the footballers and our other show, Spitballers, where we do talk more just comedy and we talk pop culture stuff uh, more on that show too. But just really, if you want to find anything we're doing, thefantasyfootballers.com, that'll, that'll get you there if you don't search for us on the podcast player. And then uh, uh, FF Hitman on Twitter. Uh, yes. I remember back to the days when the, the running thing is when will Mike get verified? I missed those Yeah, that was, that was real fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, it, you know, the old days, the nostalgia, it really harkens back. And I pre-ordered my UDK listeners. Oh, my man. Yeah, Appreciate ultimate it. draft kit. Yeah, yeah. Go check it out. Very Thank useful. You. Yeah, oh, yeah. Happy to support, Mike. Any, anything for, you know, such a special guest as yourself. And I'm highly, uh, I have strong competitive streak, so I like to get some advantages where I can. There you go. Um, Lauer, I don't want to forget about you, man. Most of our I'm listeners talking. know how to listen to you, but uh, plug something quick and we'll wrap up. I'll plug my show, which goes a lot nerdier than the discussion we had today. The Batman Believe Book it or Club. not. 
on Twitter at the Batman BC. Follow me on Twitter at Lauer underscore Ryan. Lauer spelled like lower. That expands beyond just Batman talk. Um, and yeah, Mike, thank you for joining this is a question. I appreciate it, fellas. Thank you. Awesome. And listeners, I'd love to keep the conversation going. You can follow the Batman on film um, over on Twitter for news updates from the website. You can follow me personally at Garrett Wado. That is at G-A-R-R-E-T-W-A-T-O. And if there's anything you'd like to hear about, any other guests, if you want to email me and say, hey, get that Mike guy back. We really liked him. I, I will show Mike those emails as a way to lure him back. You can email <laughs> me at garrett.grev at batman-on-film.com. That's G-A-R-R-E-T dot G-R-E-V at batmanonfilm.com. And remember, listeners, it is not who you are underneath, but it is what you do that defines you. Thank you for listening.